guys, Tim here at KML on this nice sunny day. Just a little development update for you at uh, Anderton Park Road. So we're currently, as you can see, we've got some scaffolding up here. So we're having some work done on the roof. So we're going to have some lead flashings replaced, uh, some of the felt replaced, and uh, get some dormers put in. Sort of similar to across the road here. So what I'll do is I'll just take you out the back quickly. We've got some work going on with the rear extension. So if you just follow me out the back here. So I've just got a few tradesmen here today doing putting some plasterboards up. You watch your head there. So as you can see, we've just got a little bit of brickwork going up out uh, the back here. How are we doing, guys? Good stuff. All right, Bobby, if you wouldn't mind just sort of briefly running us through where you're sort of at with the rear extension and how it's all how it's all coming along. Yeah, no problem. In introduce yourself first, mate. Yeah. I'm Bob the Bricklayer, <laughs> how are we? They call me Bob the Builder or Little Bob. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, as you can see, we're up to pad height already. Uh, just running the damp through, as your damp course runs through. Uh, the door height sits on this course here. We've got a door and window, and there's a knock through onto this building there. Uh, the back of this building will be rendered in block work. And obviously this comes through into a, this is a new part of the extension. There'll be a big doorway there. Uh, I think we've got a combination frame and a doorway there. I think that's it on the back of this one. There's no outside, no windows looking out. So yeah, it's all good. It's all good. Okay. Okay. Nice. And how long do you think sort of something like this typically uh, takes? If the two bricklayers and the labourer is about a week's work or so on the, on the brickwork. When 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 we're on it, when you're laying, that's sort of loaded out as you can see. Yeah. It's seven days, and then you off you go. Then the, the rest of the trades come in. The electricians, mm -hmm. the plumbers, the sparkies, you know. Yeah. The roof, the roof then goes on the wall plates and stuff, and then the lads at the top on on the roofing, and it goes from there. This on your flat roof on this one, so yeah. Nice and easy, nice and easy. It's fine. Outstanding. And you use some different bricks, don't you? With yeah. The, with the we're, we're, compared to cinder blocks. When, when you've got the concrete blocks. Yeah. You use a thermalite for on the inside, which sits on the inside, which is at the warm. And you've got your 25 mil up stand. Which then keeps it's not a cold floor, yeah. So it's a nice, nice warm floor. Then you run this. This this is plastic, and it runs through as a DPC, which is a damp, so stops any form of rising damp. Sure. And then these, this brick is called a Class B. Yeah. It's a solid engineer, so stops any water, obviously penetrating into the face of the bricks and, mm -hmm. and rising through. So then that stops any form of damp getting through into like your bottom of your door casings and then going into the building. Yeah. You've been it's been lined in proper DPC. You've got five inches of concrete and then underneath that you've got a hundred mil of Celotex, okay. which is another insulation which is three times thicker than this. Right. So that is to regulations and you have a hundred mil cavity, which is this, and you've got your wall ties which are these. Yeah. Which ties internal to external. Sure. And then in between, from the floor height to there, is a 100 mil rock wall, mm -hmm. which is which is keeps the building warm, which is a fully insulation. Yeah. Um, and then in, in between your doors and the windows, you'll have um, cavity closures and insulation. So basically, it's one tight unit is warm. Fantastic. So no, you know, it's the flat roof comes on and it's down to the fascias and and all the rest of it. So yeah, <coughs> but. You can have, um, we're, we're using class B's all the way up, but we're following the existing brickwork, yep. which those on the existing house is class B, okay. which is an engineer. Stops any water going into the face of the brickwork and blowing out, basically. And, and so all the face, it's all nice and smooth and mm -hmm. yeah, it's a nice finish. Just much higher quality brickwork. Okay. What, what happens if someone doesn't do the damp course properly? Right. 
you will have rising damp. Well, yeah. water will only ever rise a metre. So when you go into properties and you see that it's hacked down from the walls yeah. to a metre, mm -hmm. it'll only ever rise one metre. Yeah. Quite, quite, quite strange. Yeah. But that's this stops everything. This stops it coming through here because that's tanked in. It's, like it's, it's, it's in a box, it's in a unit. Sure. This dresses through, this comes over the top, your wall ties are in. And it's just, it's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. No, there's no, you know, it's what it should be and that's what it is to regulations. So. Yeah, I mean, we've seen people try and do like cheap extensions and, you know, no, they no. don't have a proper dam course. And oh, it's, no, no. It no, just falls just, to pieces, no, doesn't no, it, after no, a couple of years. Is, and it, underneath here, it's been blinded, which is a layer of sand. It's been whacked. It's been sellotexted. Mm -hmm. It's been concreted. It's, it's, it's going nowhere. It's, it's what it is. Fantastic. So yeah. it'll still be standing in a few years. Oh, oh it'll be, we'll, we'll be gone. We'll be long, long gone. <laughs> It'll still be. Whoa, speak for yourself, there, Bob. I'm never dying. <laughs> oh, fantastic. No, but um, you know, this is this is a nice little small project, but obviously the bigger, the, 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 it's easier to get on. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's it's good. It's good. Fantastic. It's good. Coming along nicely. It will. It, yeah, yeah. Well, it's good. I, I'm enjoying it. I enjoy it. It's good. Good stuff. What are the biggest differences between doing new builds and conversions of old buildings? The, with with the old the old buildings, there's always hidden surprises. There's walls that are not right. There's there's, there's there's not there's not plastic under the floors, so you have to pull the floors up. It's not tied in. The timbers are different height. The floor heights are different. New build is just a plot of land, and you square. You set out your squareness. You set out your levels, and off you go. It's really only what's under the ground that you've got to worry about, right? I mean, once you sort of deal with that. It's, it's very important, very, very important that your footings and your foundations are bang on. Yeah. Because if they're not, you get subsidence, then you get cracks in the brickwork, windows don't open and shut properly. It has to be bang on, which we, we, we did on this, what we do on all. Yeah. And that's what it has to be. Because if it's not, you're coming back. Because over sure. the years, it subsides, moves, and different things. So. Yeah. Yeah, so you've had a few hassles before with conversions where oh, obviously come, there's I've, only stuff you uncover once you start the work, go back to brew. It's called a little saying, you open up a can of worms. Because, I've heard of that one. Um, you go in, holy moly, what's going on? And then you have to go back to the ba ba back to the basics yeah. and put and rectify it and put it right. Okay. Because it's not going to pass regulations and stuff like that. So. Okay. Yeah. But it's all good. It's, all good. it's, it's part and parcel. But new builds. You you basically you you plot a land and off you go. Easier to cost. A lot 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 easier. Yeah. You don't you don't learn all this sort of stuff at college, mate. <laughs> and that's that's <laughs> the truth. That's the truth. I believe you. I believe so, you. No, as you can see, it's it's coming on nice. Give it another week. We'll be uh, we'll be next one. It's all good. Fantastic. That's all we like to hear. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Well, thanks Not for the problem. insight. Not a problem. Thanks Not for the problem insight. If there's anything else, mate, I'll I'll. I can answer, no problem. Fantastic. Daniel, any other questions or you want to head No, in? that's all good. Let's let's go around the house. Yeah, brilliant. brilliant. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Cheers, Not enjoy problem. the weather. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely. <laughs> Not raining. No, for once. You can Cheers, finally. Bob. Cheers, Bob. See you later. So we have had quite a big delay with the roof, haven't we? With the, with the weather, obviously that's been a bit of a headache, so that's really coming along now. Right, so we'll just take you in now and have a look at uh, some of the plasterboard that's uh, getting put up inside. Cheers. Sorry, mate, you're getting in your way. Yeah, that's all right. okay. It's all Tim's fault. <laughs> all right, if you just come through here. All right, boys, how are you doing? Got Daniel with the camera here. Do you mind sort of briefly running through what uh, what you guys are up for, uh, up, to, up to sort of in here? Or he's the man. I know he couldn't wait to get on camera. So, <laughs> so you guys just putting up a little bit of plasterboard here, obviously fixing it in place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's the sort of process? So you you obviously put this in place, skim over it. And then start plastering. Yeah, then plaster is the skin, just yeah. over it with the plaster. And then, yeah, they'll be ready for the deco, I suppose. Okay, okay. Nice. So what sort of time frame do you think you're, you're working with? <laughs> <laughs> Tom's the man to ask for that, I reckon. 
Tommy, what sort of uh, what sort of time frame do you think you've you've got with this one? Well, what's left? Or, uh, yeah, with what's left, yeah. Probably about two weeks. About two weeks, okay. Yeah. Okay. So the plaster ball goes up, then you skim over it. Yeah. And then what's the sort of process that you go through from there? Uh, what? what and then basically just tacking them through the coat paint. Okay. Things. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, cheers. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Right, so I'll just take Sorry you. to do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> that was not paper. <laughs> I'll not just paper. Take you guys here. Okay, so this room's a little bit further behind. So obviously you've already seen a lot of the stud work, and we've got some plasterboard going up there as well. So as the guy said, we'll skip over that. We'll get uh, we'll get it all painted. We've got a lot of skirting boards and architraves and that sort of thing that. Already gone in. So through here we're going to have this wall knocked through for the extension. Uh, obviously we'll have the kitchen fitted all along here. Uh, and we're looking, looking like around a month, a month or so with the rest of these projects. So I'll take you upstairs just briefly. Just zooming in there, are we? <laughs> so if you follow me up here. Okay, so we'll head in here, and obviously from here we'll get some um, get some painting done, uh, and then we'll have the ensuite fitted there with uh, with your basin, toilet, that sort of thing. Then we'll get fixtures and fittings in, and then we'll essentially be ready to uh, start conducting some viewings, and we'll aim to get this let out as it's complete. Okay, guys, um, if you have any other questions, the rooms. please please let us know. So this is it's obviously going to be a storage cupboard in there. And through here, you can see this has come quite a long way as well. So you can sort of really get a sense of the layout of the room. Washer and dryer in here. Again, you can never have too much storage with HMOs. Anything else you'd add, Daniel? Uh, just one one thing. Uh, <coughs> make sure when your builders are building the stud wall that uh, you've got the actual door furniture correctly. We've come across quite a few projects that uh, simply don't have any at all. Um, and what needs to happen is every Every door needs to be painted in fire retardant uh, substances, as well as having a groove for the the smoke screen, which is sort of like a little foam expanding um, strip that expands when the heat you know, when it comes under heat. Um, but there are you need to be really really up to date with all the HMO regulations. Just they change so often. Um, for example, one of the rooms. Minimum sizes are now 6.5 square meters, meaning where previously we could have rented this as a room, we're not, but now we can't. All right, we'll, uh, we'll head up the top quickly. Just wind things up. So again, we've had a little bit more plasterboard that's been put in here since we were last in here. So we'll have some of this Stripped away from the roof here. Uh, this isn't one of the bigger rooms, but it's still a decent size, and we're going to have some good, good storage in here. But um, I think this, you know, obviously you can see some of the insulation around here as well. But I think you'd agree, Daniel. This has been quite a big learning experience, hasn't it, in terms of the way we structure developments with. Uh, with our tradesmen having a proper schedule of works done, working to a tighter deadline, getting third parties in to uh, determine exactly uh, what needs to be done initially, uh, just to make sure you're not sort of overpaying for things. But um, yeah, it's been a very good process. Is there anything else you'd add on on the process? Uh, no, 
just stay on top of your builders. They'll work hard for you if you work hard for them. I agree. Incentivize, incentivize. All right, guys, if you have any other questions, please let us know. Uh, and you can obviously find us at www.kmlgroup.co.uk. Okay, take care. Bye.